All right, guys, so we're two years in. What are our thoughts? What do we think about the Model X? Uh, this particular Model X is the 90D. Uh, so first, obviously, it's a Model X. It's, it's awesome. Uh, it's an SUV, CUV, sort of hybrid, if you will. Uh, not too tall, not too low. Uh, just a good size, very comfortable. All the great things you know about Tesla, as well as these lovely Falcon wing doors, which make it very easy to get things in and get out, but also other creature comforts such as auto closing doors, auto opening doors, as well as uh, the concept of soft closed doors, which again was typically preserved for high end cars like uh, Bentleys, Rolls Royces, things of that nature. So to have something like that with the Model X is pretty cool. All right, in addition to this, uh, the 90D, the 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, it's done okay. Uh, lots of more degradation than I would like in terms of how much uh, battery degradation we've accumulated, but it's not bad, um, not as bad as I thought it would be. I uh, still would prefer something more st solid and stable like the 85 kilowatt or the 100 kilowatt, but the 95 isn't bad. Definitely would recommend getting 100 if you have the chance to get an Model X. Definitely get the 100 kilowatt hour battery, have the most range. 75, not as much range, uh, but either way, the form factor is still the same across the battery pack. So you're getting all the great features, all the great amenities, all wheel drive, air suspension. I like the different levels, more levels than the actual Model S in terms of it being able to go very high and very low, uh, in addition to just standard low and high. All right, other than that, it's been a champ. It's been pretty good, pretty solid. One of the things that we've had issues with is some of the, some of the build quality, some of the squeaks and rattles. Our Falcon wing doors have been pretty good, pretty consistent. A couple of creaks every now and again that need to get replaced. No drive unit issues two years in. No other issues in terms of the car itself and functionality of the car. We didn't have to get an MCU replaced. We didn't have to get a touchscreen replaced, anything like that. So two years in, about 35,000 miles, not too heavily used. Uh, it's done pretty well. It's held up pretty well. Um, I think the next thing we want to look for when we talk about uh, two years in, we also want to talk about the white seats. Um, and if I can get in here and get a good shot of it, you'll be able to see how they've held up. So the white seats, everyone's always asking about the white seats. Should you get them? Should you not get them? What about stains? Ours have held up pretty well, pretty well. Uh, a little bit of blue, if you can get really closely and see a little bit of blue here and there. If you clean them off regularly with baby wipes or just some kind of general wipes, uh, it'll be good. You don't have to go crazy. It's not a, 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 a laborious process to keep them clean, but you do need to treat them every now and again. Okay. Uh, but for the most part, they've held up pretty good. I've worn new, new blue jeans. I've worn new black jeans in the rain with jeans. Uh, no real major issue. If all you do is wear jeans, that may be an issue for some. But again, you want to treat them accordingly. You want to maybe put something on top of them, a coating on top of it if you'd like. Otherwise, uh, you can keep them pretty white uh, for the most part. But again, if you get really close, there may be some issues, specifically in these bolsters. These are always going to be problematic where the material starts to crease. The foam and, the, and the, the vegan material, the vegan leather, if you will, starts to crease up a little bit. And that's where you're going to start to trap some dirt as well. So other than that, for the most part, the entire cabin has been pretty much... Uh, spot on in terms of uh, being retaining its white the brightness of its white All right, and we also have matching white legs for the the pregnant queen over here as well uh, So you can see the contrast her white jeans against the white seat pretty white. So no issues there uh, But again build quality I have noticed one of the major issues that you that I've noticed is that right here on the side of the seat Right here is a piece of plastic this piece of plastic again depending on the weight of the driver or the rider over time starts to create a little bit of a friction noise. Do you hear that? That noise, as you have weight on here, starts to creak a lot. So when you start to drive, you'll start to hear those creaks and rattles. That's the culprit, uh, at least for us that is. Uh, that's the culprit right down here, uh, this piece of plastic right here, squeaking as you have weight on this seat, causing a little bit of noise. Uh, so that's been a, a, bit, a bit of a pain for us. But for the most part, overall, it's been a really, really great car. We have the five-seater here as opposed to the six-seater or the seven-seater. So we don't have to worry about the captain's chairs. These seats fold down and fold flat. Lots of room. Actually, more room than the Model S uh, because it gives you the additional headroom, right? So the Model S has the same, probably the same distance in terms of the length that can hold. But you're missing out because the lower roof line of the Model S. The Model X has a little bit tighter so you can fit more things in the back, okay? Other than that, it's been pretty solid all around no issues no complaints from our perspective 
Uh, which do I prefer? I obviously prefer the Model S because it's quicker, but if I want to have long distances, I'm going to be set up higher, I want to have a more comfortable cushion, cushioned ride, I'm going to go with the Model X. My, my car of choice when it talks about comfort, when we talk about ride quality and comfort, Model X is definitely the car of choice in that regard. So this is held up pretty well. The large windscreen, knock on wood or any other surfaces necessary. We've not had any, any issues with the windscreen. We've not had any issues with this huge, uh, huge screen in terms of cracks, in terms of, you know, chips and things of that nature. So we're all good there. Uh, and then last but not least, the main issue that we have with this car, uh, the, sort of the downside of it is, is, drum roll please, if you see me swaying back and forth, is the weight and therefore the tires. I have never in my life replaced tires as frequently as I've had to with the Model X. Absolute worst thing of this car is the weight because it's a huge heavy vehicle and therefore very prone to getting nails stuck in the tire. Nails, razor blades, other foreign objects stuck in the tire, puncturing the tire on the sidewall, or any other place. I would never drive this car over off-road surfaces like these, uh, over the rocks or, you know, sort of the rocky parking lots that they have. I would not do it just because the risk is too great. And so with these 20-inch uh, wheels here, standard ones, you're looking at the tires at about $400 a pop. Uh, definitely not a good look. We've had to replace them more than six times on this car, various tires frequently within the same month sometimes. So very frustrating, very annoying. My biggest complaint is just the weight of the car makes it almost impossible not to uh, get a flat tire. Other than that, it's been pretty great. Uh, I would not dare get the 22s because that would probably be even worse. And because of the weight, those 22 tire inch tires, they wear out much quicker uh, than you would a normal tire. All right. Other than that, it's been pretty rock solid no issues no complaints it looks great uh the falcon wing doors are also awesome uh, however there are circumstances where you use it in a tight garage or something like that and i'll show you the behavior that you get you get this in a tight garage where the car can't go up or down you get a situation where you really can't get into the car you really can't get into the car. So now you have a bit of a problem here, again, for tight garages. So that's the only issue with the Falcon Wing doors. The speed of them as well, uh, sometimes it could be a little faster, but sometimes it takes its time to be thorough. But at the end of the day, this is the fundamental problem. When you have a garage that is too low or too tight on the side, you have a situation where you're trying to sneak into the garage and sneak into the door and get in this way. That's my only problem, my only complaint. Otherwise, top notch. But uh, anyone else who has a Model X, okay, anyone else has a Model X, leave a comment in, below. Let me know what your thoughts are after having your Model X for however long you've had it. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your feedback below. And until then, enjoy your Tesla. And we'll see you in the next video.